Hello. Hello. This is Mike Lindell. Can you hear me? Hey, Mike. It's it's Mike and Jay from the Detroit cast. How are you, pal? Hey, Mike. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, yeah, I'm not coming through pretty clear. I'm trying out this new phone, this new speaker phone here, but otherwise I can. Uh, yeah, I we got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Where Where are you calling us from? I'm back in Minnesota for one day, and then I head to Panama. Oh, wow. What's going on in Panama? I uh, I have uh, my foundations in 80 countries, and that's one of my newest ones. I'm, I'm meeting the Panama president uh, this week. Well, nice. Well, you were, uh, uh, I believe, in Washington D.C. for the inauguration the last couple of days. How, how did that go for you? Oh, that was uh, that was surreal. Um, yeah. Absolutely amazing. I had more people come up and want where they do the pictures for the movie stars. Uh, they did an article out there in the Washington or in the. Washington New York Post. Post, the line, the, the, the New York Post, the line was, the line was longer. Go see this. Line was longer for me than uh, than any of those guys. I heard <laughs> that, Mike. I actually heard the ladies were swooning for you. Is that true? Well, it was the the way they twisted it. It was everybody wanting my picture, not just ladies. <laughs> it was. Uh, That's... It was. Uh, and it was more. They were more resonated. They were more talking about my story of redemption and. Uh, than what they what they made it out to be but but that's i guess that's okay yeah that, that's got to be unbelievable to you to be like an unknown guy and then and then all of a sudden be you know you probably can't walk through airports without having to sign autographs or take pictures no it's pictures autographs um especially since uh um it's been so much with um with uh, my story getting out there um you know, quitting all my crack cocaine and everything else, and then to where right. I'm at today. Right. Yeah, and it definitely is a story of redemption, and it's well documented. But why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I, I think I'd like to pick up at the 19 hour, the 19 day bender. Is that a good place to yeah, start? Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the, uh, well, I was uh, I was addicted to uh, cocaine for 20 some years, and then crack cocaine from the early 2000s, and and when I invented the pillow, and two people always ask me, well, when did you invent the pillow? And I said 2005. And, or four and five, and they go, and when did you quit crack? And I go, two th- January 16, 2009. And they go, that's a miracle in itself that you are able to function with that, um, you know, with that drug. And, and, um, and yeah, I went up, uh, I actually, in the early 2008, uh, I couldn't even buy a, a drugs in Minneapolis. Um, the drug dealers did a, basically an intervention. They said, you've been up too late or too long, and uh, we're worried about you. And you're the only one that can uh, – they actually wanted me to quit for good. They were that concerned, and they uh, and I couldn't buy drugs anywhere. I got back, and that, that's when the guy took the famous picture. He said, he said you're going to need this picture for your book when you quit someday. And, what, um, what do you what do you think made them do that? Like, look, I've I've had plenty of fun in my past, and and as well, Mike, and I've known plenty of drug dealers. None of them ever gave the impression that they would care. One as long as you were buying from them, I've never met a drug dealer with a heart. Like that's incredible. Right. right. Well, the, I think uh, I think God had His hand in that. There were three of them, and they ran most of the people in downtown in the inner city where I was at, and and. I literally could not go. I walked down the streets and people were running from me going, no. And I said, I got a hundred dollars. I only want $5 worth. And they, and it was that much of a shutout. And I really think they did it because the two of them, you know, I've, one of them works for me since he's a, he's a born again Christian. And, uh, is that tied for my, my pillow? And he, and when they were talking to me, then it's like, they knew that, that God had this bigger platform for me that was going, that the pillow was just a platform for a much bigger purpose in this world. And, yeah. and they sense, they sense that too. Cause I would talk about it back then, even, even mirrored in my drug addiction. And, and I think that's where that came from. You know, they, uh, um, because they, they said that even that night, they said, you're our only hope. And then they said, but by the way, when you like do Benton quit, Obi. don't take that. Yeah. They said, by the way, when you do quit, don't take, uh, don't take too many with you right away. That was one of the guy's quotes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's funny because all my friends that were on crack cocaine, there's only one that's still on it out of, uh, and there, that was 30 or 40 people of my, of the, out here in the suburbs of, uh, of Minneapolis where uh, where I grew up where the, um, they've all kind of they followed my lead which they thought before was impossible yeah and uh, it's pretty amazing and you mentioned the one dealer who's now with you is that Ty, Ty? yeah that's Ty, Ty no, no that's deal? Joe no oh, that's Joe. Joe he's uh yeah um and Ty I've helped him and his fam- him and his him and his family we've stayed in touch and uh, um his mom's a nice Christian girl and Ty's 
Ty's uh, Ty's out of the business, but he doesn't work for my pillow. Yeah. So oh wow. Why wouldn't he work for my pillow? Know. He knows the owner. He knows the founder. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. Would, would you t- would you take Ty on if he if he wanted sales? Right. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. No. He's 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 coming. He's worked for us before and and uh, and uh, on and off. So yeah. yeah. You know he's he, he can come work whenever he wants. Well, Mike, one of the things that's funny, and we were we were kind of worried about this interview today because someone tweeted us a video of you on Fox News. And I I think you had lost your voice at the inauguration. And I think that's one of the things that was so endearing to us. Um, I don't know if people are doing impressions of you or if you've noticed that stuff. No, no. uh, When I was on uh, Judge Janine, you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I didn't see the clip last night, but I I had completely lost my voice. And and the first three days at the inauguration, I wasn't feeling good. uh, But I was there early, like last Saturday. Yeah. And then, uh, and then when, when I when I actually had the uh, the the judge, uh, she was in my group, the the, uh, the group of people that I had invited, and she we went out on the street, and uh, I said I don't have my voice, and she just kind of I haven't even seen the clip, but I'm sure that the uh, I'm sure people realized I didn't have a voice that day. So it's come back a little today. It's actually come back pretty good. Yeah, it sounds yeah. pretty good. So Mike, what are you yelling at the inauguration that you lose your voice? He's like, I love you, Trump. No, you know, mine was mostly from talking. It wasn't from yelling. Gotcha. I was talking ah. to thousands upon thousands of people. I mean, every single person recognized me, and then, they, you know, they want to hear my story, and it was just, it was nonstop talking. Yeah. It wasn't so much yelling. And then when you have a noisy a place, you're, you, you know, your voice loud. is that much louder, you know. And uh, so it wasn't, uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I do love Trump. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I wonder about that. Do you catch a lot of heat from that? Is there a big backlash from people because you outwardly well, support him? Well, so, yeah, certainly here. And I'm in Minnesota. And, uh, you know, Seriously. I did that. I spoke at the rally. I spoke at the rally in Minnesota before Mr. Trump, two days before the election. Sure. And everybody there, you know, they're going, Mike, you should run for governor and all this stuff. And I'm going and I'm going, I'm not a politician, and I don't want to do that. And Either they, was they, the body, though. And, Either was the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jesse, the body right, wasn't. Right. <laughs> but they, but this start, you know, for me, you know, and I went to two of the debates, and I got a lot of the, a lot of the media, the mainstream media, they couldn't twist my story, which was nice, but they were very, you know, I've, I've took a lot of backlash on Twitter and, and people at my stores and, and you know, People that are out there and they're angry that uh, that Mr. Trump won, and and uh, you know I'm taking the heat for that a lot, but my sales are actually up because of what I did. But you got to realize I had a I had a meeting with him this summer, August 15th, where he he reached out to me and wanted to know how I'm doing it with 1,500 employees, made in America. It's everything that he wants in this country, and. Um, and he was doing his due diligence, and then he also knew what I was doing with the inner cities, and he and he wanted to know, you know, wow, you're doing that with private funds, and and you could just see the the stuff we talked about, and 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 then I got to be friends with Ben Carson, and so my reality, you can't take away my reality of what I know what this guy's like, and I know what a great president he's going to be, and I I would not have went out there a hundred percent like that with all my passion, if I put my business at risk, if I didn't, if I didn't believe in everything that's going to come to fruition and people are going to start, they're going to come back to me and go, just like they did when they said, well, Mike, how did you know he was going to win? You know, well, I met the man and I'm going, how can this guy lose? It's going to be amazing. This is God's got his hand in this. And I truly believe that. And then now I can't wait for him to start doing things because now it's going to be, wow, he is, this is, this is amazing. This is amazing. And you're going to see a united country like you've never seen before and, and you can quote me on that it's going to be amazing well i hope you're right i hope you're right too mike and for your sake and for the my pillow business because we've seen that right, the, the right. left has shown that they're willing to mobilize and kill opposing views so oh absolutely they are but you know what the only way the only way to get them is you know like i say right now is to you know neither side i went on tv yesterday on cbs and i said you know Neither side has ever been able to help out the inner cities and get it done right. And yeah. and this time it's, I know, cause I'm part of it with private funds, which I'm going to be doing with my foundation starting in Minneapolis 
and actually this week. And I'm already in 80 countries, so I know this thing, this works. And you combine that, I'm, I'm going to be meeting ben, Dr. Ben Carson at the National Prayer Breakfast, and and I'm going to, you know, he got picked for HUD, and and I just think the stuff with all these that that's going to go on. And if you start getting that done first, and then the economy, and people start seeing little victories, it's just going to snowball. And finally, you're not going to get the far left, and you're not going to get that, you know the far right. You're not going to get any of these, but you're going to get the people united. And that's where, and then that'll be, I want it to get to the point where they can't even say anything bad, where it's going, how can you say something bad that's finally getting done that we've all, you know, hope for everybody can be employed. Everybody can be, you know, happy and have a great life and, and, uh, and not have poverty. And, uh, you know, I mean, if we get rid of get get some of these things solved, it's going to be amazing. Well, Mike, we certainly give you credit for working toward that. Um, but we'd be remiss, however, if we did not ask you about your famous product, My Pillow, and uh, mm-hmm. where that idea came from, and what the hell it's comprised of. You know, we hear so much about this patented fill and the fact that it's right. machine washable. Um, what? what, the, what the, <laughs> you like that? You like when I say R and wash? I always said if I ever did <laughs> run for office, I'd go vote for me, and I'll put the R back in Washington. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's that's Mike. When I talk about the, the like uh, parody of you, I feel like there's something there with you. I do a I do a, a Mike Lindell impression, and people love it. it. They they know what you sound like, and there's so many little things like machine washable. <laughs> And uh, right. pa- patented, <laughs> my patented Phil. Hi, I'm Mike Lindell. And you kind of have a, <laughs> you you kind of sound a little bit like Jesse the Body Ventura. You know, we're both from Minnesota. Right, right. He wore tights to work, and I invented a patented Phil. Right, <laughs> right on, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, back to back to Jay's no. point. What was your question? Yeah, no, I, tell us a little you know, bit. I got, the, I got the question with my pillow. Is I, you know, I always I thought it was. Uh, weird back in the day or different and uh you know i probably was a little bit but i couldn't sleep i would have you know i'd flip-flop all night long my pillows would go like flat i'd use my arm and uh, yeah exactly flip-flop like a guppy <laughs> and they, uh, <laughs> they, uh but any but but what happened is you know there was nothing out there and i had tried every pillow and known to man i mean oh this one went to the moon who cares i'd like to sleep right here on earth you know yeah. they come out with all these pillows that do this and this but they don't they don't care about us they, they all they care about is selling pillows the average american buys 43 pillows in a 10-year period what? and you really we all, and we all and we all have six pillows per person per household that don't work and when i went to invent this i thought you know what I, I spent about a year and a half. My um, we tried all different kinds of fills inside. Where I wanted something you could move, but it would be soft, but it wouldn't go flat during the night. And uh, when I when I finally came up with the the patented fill, it's three different sizes. One's the size of a quarter, one's the size of a dime, and one's the size of down. Yeah, I prefer and the you, dime you sizer, can, but and you can me. move and you can move this. And it holds in the exact position for you, so it keeps your neck aligned at night. It's like it's like making the pillow fit you instead of trying to fit the pillow. And then when I did that, I started asking people, you know, who do you, what do you what would you like to see in a pillow? And and people went, well, I'd like to see some value, so I put a ten year warranty on it. Well then, well I'd like to keep it, you know, be healthy, and I made it so you could wash and dry it, and all these different things. And I was up against an industry that was so that people had just become complacent that pillows didn't work. So I put a 60 day money back guarantee on it. And people told me I was nuts back in 2005 and everybody laughed at me that I would get a patent. And, and you know what? I was turned down everywhere. I was turned down everywhere and all the box stores, the shopping channels. And until so I did that, um, infomercial that would just my friends and family put together and with a real audience in October 7, 2011, when we did that, we went from five employees to 540 days. Wow. And I busted it open, it just Mike. exploded. We hired the whole town. I didn't know what an HR department was. I go, <laughs> that sounds horrible. That sounds horrible. Why do I want that? And I, I don't have that to this day. I, I got rid of that department. I, I uh, We have a help center. <laughs> We have a help center for our employees, and we ah. we care about each one as it's our like it's our only employee rather than setting them up to fail. And and they said, Mike, you need to be CEO. And I go, Why do I want to be CEO? Don't they just steal the money? <laughs> and uh, and I, you know, I had all these things, but we 
but we got through it, and there was a lot more betrayal and a lot more um, stuff that happened in 2011 and 12, and and we uh, we fell on our face again, but we got we picked ourselves up, and and uh, and now we have over 1,600 employees, and uh, it's growing every day, and we're gonna. We've got uh, about four, three hundred thousand square feet of, of uh, factory, all in my, you know, all in my home state where I live here in Minnesota, and and uh, right outside of my office is my call center. I take my customer service so seriously; it's like every customer I view is my only customer. So you're you're thirty you know? like thirty million sold, I think, or twenty five plus million sold. Is that right? Yeah, we've sold twenty six million pillows now, wow. and. Uh, it's just amazing, and they. Uh, it is amazing, Mike. Really quick on the fill. I want to. I want to return to the fill real quick. Is that literally patented, or is that just your tagline? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's pat- no, it's patented. I have a patent number on it, and it's just. Um, I get everything made in Wisconsin, um, and I've been with the same, yeah. the same company and engineers that I've worked with since day one. Um, yeah, and it's kind of great because it's um, because it lasts ten years, and you can wash and dry it. The big companies really have not caught. They really have not copied me because they don't want you. It's like the cars that got 200 miles a gallon. They would, I believe, they would have went around me, got the patent on this, stopped me from making it, and stop, and never brought it to market because they want you to continue to buy pillows that don't work over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, that's a great so, point. So that's what in patents, and that's what they're good for. And for me, is just that I can always make my own product, and and uh, and then it's too late to close the gate. The cows are out of the barn, so we're here to stay. And we're not. Everyone's saying, yeah. "Well, you should make it overseas," and all this other stuff. And no, way. no I'm not going to make anything overseas. And it's making it here. Well, how do you feel about Goose Down? Because I heard yeah. it's just as good. No, Goose Down. You, whoever told you that said it's the worst thing. That pillow has ruined America. They, they uh, Goose Down. It's just air. So when you, it feels soft right away. That's the thing about my pillow. It feels good right away, and then it goes flat, and you're re-fluffing and using your arm, and your arm goes to sleep instead of you. The whole concept behind my pillow is to have something that feels that soft, Mm-hmm. But yet, but yet it holds that height. It, it's supportive, soft. Goose down has no support. Yeah. It feels yeah. good right away, and it's only as comfortable as how long the air leaks out of that pillow ticking. As soon as it leaks out and goes flat, you just well, you know, reflop or stack about twenty of them pillows up like cordwood. I feel your hatred for goose down. I, I equally hate goose down. I'm allergic to it, and so there's that. So I've never and been. And those fan little of, feathers poke through. They, every yeah, now they and then. poke Creeps through the you pillow. Out, man. Well, the, you know what the industry convinced us of that just like they do every pillow they come up with you know yeah. uh, how about the how about the ones you know set your wine over here on your bed and you can uh, jump around on yeah. the bed and not yeah. spill your wine well, you know i mean this pillow went to the moon and i'm going okay that's great you know um i feel you know boy i'll buy 10 of them <laughs> yeah you know, well what about those know, water what about those water like, those water filled jobs though like the cairo pillow uh, well the water you know when you got water pillows you can and now think of that concept. The the your, it's all about keeping your neck straight. If you had to micro adjust that, you got to let a little water out, put a little water yeah, in. Good point. And if you get it just right for your side sleeping, you need less height for your back sleeping, and even less for stomach sleeping. So you'd be you'd be adjusting. You'd have to have like three water pillows all adjusted for the right height for you, and then they would be worked. They, you know, it's all about adjustability. You want a pillow that you can adjust, like my pillow yeah I'll move it where you want it and it will hold there hey, hey mike your promotion of this thing has been second to none you mentioned the infamous commercial that blew you up but how'd you end up with like those classic blue satin pjs that uh you the shirt you mean or, okay yeah. maybe it's just the yeah, shirt that, maybe yeah, it the just shirt. looks like well, a PJ. let me tell you they they did a poll at the minnesota state fair they uh they found out that the top five things you recognize of mike lindell in a commercial number one was mustache mike cross. mustache with number two number cross? two was the mustache yes. number three was the voice uh, the number voice. four was the blue, was the blue shirt and number five was how i hold the pillow ah. now that blue shirt <laughs> yeah. now that yeah. blue shirt actually came from i bought it years ago there's another company i'm not going to name their name but they did a study um, on what t- colors work in trade shows and home shows for different products. And about that same time and space, I had I had went out and bought a blue shirt with that color, a short sleeve one. And and then I found out it matched what they what they were they were a betting company, and they also had done a study that 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 color actually works in that industry. And I thought, well, that wow, it, it just kind of confirms what I've already been doing using that color and. 
And then I needed a long sleeve shirt to do the commercial. And the first one I did, uh, we happened to buy that shirt. And uh, now I probably have, you know, 50 of those shirts hanging around. Yeah, it's, it, you, you really are the Ken Bone of pillow sales because Ken Bone has to be seen in his red sweater. I don't think you could make another commercial without that blue shirt. I agree. I did. We tried it once on a shopping channel, and the people called in, and we, they were very yeah. upset. Criminal, um, it yeah. Would, it, would be like, it would be like if I shaved my mustache I, I was or didn't about wear to say my that. cross. Yeah. The, the yeah, mustache I, uh, is so important. Actually, this, this might be a Samson right. situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have, you'd yeah, have, uh, don't yeah, risk there it. would be a little revolt there. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it's, it's fascinating too. When you, when you think of your story, you know, going back to the, to your rough beginnings with the crack cocaine problem, so many people would try to bury that story in shame. They wouldn't want it to be out there. It's something you would hope would stay silent, but you, you know, we learned early on, you really own that story. What made you decide, you know, here you've got this business and people don't trust, you know, uh, junkies. So what made you decide like, hey, you know what, this is my story, I'm going to own it? Well, you know, I, th- I think um, without that without that story, you know, my, my passion is, you know, like all my employees, we're a help center where we've, we've been, I've been helping. It's easy for me to help people. And they hear my story at, you know, when I do speeches at, uh, at drug addiction or drug places and, and rehabilitation places. And if I wouldn't have been public with that, I don't think I could have, uh, you know, done with the platform that I'm going to do to, for God and to, and to help addicts get off drugs. Because, uh, you know, when I, myself, I didn't have, it's, it's, it's hard to, to find people that are that public with it and that, that will um, not worry about the backlash. And, and you're right. I get stories all the time going, oh, he's back on drugs. He did crack for Christmas, and especially during this attack since I got a little political. Sure. And, uh, you know, when I quit everything, it took a long time. Obviously, first the dealers trusted me, and it took a long time to build trust. And, you know, I guess I've never even thought of the alternative. I guess I'm not built that way. I'm so I'm so transparent that um, um, if it would have been – if it would have hurt my company, I would have done it anyway. And uh, that's the way I've always been. If I get passionate about something, that's why people have told me last spring, you know, and when I – when I and this summer when I met uh, Mr. Trump was you know oh you better not go public with it. it's going to hurt your business and I go you know what I'm, if I'm passionate I believe in something that's going to help people you know I, I get approached every day by by ventures and by inventions and things to make money and I'm going you know what it's not to me it's not about the money it's about helping people and. I just think if I wouldn't be that trans, if I wouldn't be transparent, I don't know any other way. I'm not built that way. I guess that's kind of yeah. my answer. It's- well, going back to the the 19-day run you had, and I, I think you've downplayed that to like 14 days because 19 19-day bender where you didn't sleep sounds so incredible. I've never heard of anything like it. I mean, what do you have any recollection of what that was like to be in the middle of? Well, you know, the um, it wasn't. You know, it was just a little longer than other ones. There was many times it'd be eight to ten days and. Oh. Uh, um, and that's pretty, and that's, you guys got to realize that's in the, in the crack cocaine and in the, and, and, uh, in meth, uh, methamphetamines and, um, um, and those two, those two things where you are staying up, you know, you'd hear stories all the time, people being up five, 10 days and, and, you know, 12 days. And, and, uh, it just sounds so, so crazy to someone that's never been in that, in that drug world. But when you stretched out to, you know, 19, you know, I actually argued with the dealers going, what do you mean it was only 14? It's only been 14. They're going, <laughs> no, you know, I've been with you every day. No, you've been to my house every, you know. And it just, the reason I tried to minimize it was because um, it sounds too, grand, not grandiose, but it just sounds too exaggerated to the common person out there. Yeah. So I didn't, you know, when I write my book, I'm going to just put for days. And it's like almost like living inside of a, of a movie, you know, during that time, it was like the day just becomes one big long day. You, you know, you get tired, not tired, you know, and, uh, it almost reminds me of James Fry. Remember James Fry, the, uh, the guy that wrote a million little pieces that was debunked later. He went on Oprah and his sales blew up and he had, he had some unbelievable drug stories that were debunked, but it almost sounds like they, like, like, I don't know how you would do that without being hallucinating like crazy and you know what i mean right right and see the the thing that guy that wrote the million little pieces i read that book and if you're a drug user you read that and you go this isn't true because there's certain things like uh 
where he said he was throwing up and, uh, well, that certain drug he was on, you don't throw up on. I mean, there, there's just different things that were in there that uh, that if you're a user, you're going, well, this guy obviously made this up. You know, what is he? You know, I've spent a lot of time in jail and stuff and, they, uh, and in treatment centers and just some of the stuff we recognized right away as addicts that weren't true. Um, with my book, what I've done is I've, I've kind of been blessed. I've saved evidence over the years of different things, near-death experiences and all these all these things that happened to me, actual newspaper articles or anything that's happened, so that when you read my book called What Are the Odds, by the time you read the book, if you don't believe in God, you didn't read the book because every little thing has been proven. So you've got proof of all these little things that happened or all these big things that happened throughout the book. And you're going, wow, because some of them are so hard to believe. And I, I'm actually going to have a website where you can go to to say, oh, wow, this really happened. And here's the witnesses that it did happen. So when you talk about near death experiences, what what do you uh, what do you mean? What what almost happened to you? I think I read something in the Forbes article. Here's an example. I, I, when I was 17, I had um, I got 11 traffic tickets in two days out running the cops, and uh, I was going and I was going skydiving in uh, a place here in Minnesota, and it was my I, it was my ninth jump, and I was shot, pulled from the plane. Well, I fell asleep on my motorcycle. I was working two jobs at a drive-in theater and a, and a grocery store. And I fell asleep on my motorcycle uh, and, cra- and crashed it. I actually picked myself up off the highway. I fell perfect into the ditch, and I got on that. And, and uh, I'm all banged up and bloody, but I wanted to get this static line jump done so I could free fall the next time. And I got down there, and, and here I had a malfunction um, with my parachute, and I and I uh, they figure I hit the ground maybe 50, 60 miles an hour. And, what? And, uh, what? And so, but I was so worried that the cops were coming, and I was able to get back up, all banged up, and, and get on my bike before the before the cops and the ambulance got there. And I said, "I'm leaving. You guys can't. You guys can't keep me here." And my my bike's all banged up, and I'm all bloodied and broken up. And I and I had an hour drive back. I had an hour drive back home, and I said, "God, if you get me home." Home. I'm never going to ride a motorcycle or jump out of a perfectly good airplane again, and I never have since wow. that day. <laughs> that's in, that's incredible. I want to you you breezed past this, but how do you get stopped for 11, 11 times in two days by the cops it, for outrunning well, them? Well, you if you if you outrun them, uh, you outrun them the first day. I think I, actually it was seventeen tickets. It was eleven one day and six the next. Um, <laughs> um, the, the 11 tickets, you know, going through a four-way semaphore, going, you know, failing to yield to an emergency vehicle. They just listed off all the tickets, and I didn't get a lawyer or a plea bargain. So, And the very next day, I was I didn't have a motorcycle endorsement, so I tried, you know, when you turn 18, you get an automatic license back then in the 70s. And uh, and uh, so I, tr- I outran the cops both days, and then I got caught both the second day, and they— uh, <laughs> And they stopped me with 17 tickets, and I read. I pled guilty to every one of them before the judge. And, <laughs> and uh, all you heard was a voice in the back of the courtroom go, "Boy, is he in trouble?" or something like that. <laughs> so I can't use the words. I can't use the words on the radio. <laughs> My mother actually went to that courtroom, and she, I said, "Mom, now whatever you do, you tell him. You tell him. I, you know, I want to be tried. I don't want to be tried as an adult." And um, anyway, she get we practice this all the way there, and she gets in the courtroom, and she stands up. She says, Your Honor, I am tired of Mike always getting off easy. I want him tried as an adult and blah, blah, oh. blah. And I, go, I look at her and go, this isn't what we practice at all. This is <laughs> – Oh, my God, that's so funny. But I had other I had other near death. I've had – I've been trapped under the ice uh, where I couldn't find the hole to get back up. <laughs> what? I've been burned up in a, burned in a fire. Um, uh, um, and uh, electrocuted, I blew up. Oh. I blew up a whole town without uh, taking a uh, taking a air conditioner off a roof. I hit the guide wires, and uh, the whole town the whole town blew the whole town blew up. And they go, "Look, the crane's on fire!" And they go, "No, look, Mike's on fire!" And and nothing nothing happened to me. And they still can't explain it at the electric company how I lived, but it blew up the whole town. It was divine uh, intervention. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the only way they could explain it because, they, you know, I had this big calling later on. What happened know? when you got stuck under the ice? I'm assuming you were ice fishing in Minnesota. 
No, I was I was actually duck hunting in Minnesota, and it was over Thanksgiving in in 1978. And it was uh, I snuck up on these ducks and fell through the ice and went <laughs> under the ice and couldn't get and couldn't get my head up through the ice. And I had my you can't push your gun up through it because there's there's no there's no pressure underwater to get enough pressure. And I I I, I fell in the bottom of the lake, and I and then I finally pushed bashed my head up through the ice and. I collected up my ducks I had gotten, and I stuck them in my hunting coat, and I had a quarter-mile walk in a blizzard back to my truck. And, and those ducks, the ducks' warmth actually saved my life because I passed out in the snow and the, uh, on top of the ducks, and, and uh, it was pretty crazy. I, I, I was thrown solid. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of that's uh, kind of a kind of like getting put in a tauntaun almost, you know. My intentions were just to go back to my to my uh, Thanksgiving with my family and go look at I got all these ducks and it was uh, that was very amazing that they warmed me up enough where I could actually then I could get to my truck and actually opened up the car. I could barely turn the key because my hands were froze solid. This is going to be an incredible book, and I thought I read that you were. Um, I know you're friends with Stephen Baldwin. Um, yep. and he's a, he's an interesting guy. I've only, I've met him once, um, back in it. He was, he was back in, uh, I don't think he was born again at the time when I met him, right. but, uh, are you talking about doing a, uh, some sort of movie with him about your life? Yeah, we just, we just, yeah, we, we, um, we're best friends now and we, we just finished our first movie. I told him, I said, Stephen, I said this a couple years ago. I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I got a book coming out that's going to change the world. And I said, I really want to make some movies from it. I want to learn the industry. Can I come to your, come to one of your sets? And, and, and uh, he says, brother, I'll do you one better. Let's make some movies together so you can learn the industry. And our first movie is called Youth Group. It's coming out this spring, and it's, it's done. I've, I've watched it. It's, it's awesome. I have, a, I have a cameo in it, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, pretty, it's, it's, really, it's a Christian comedy. It's never been done before. And then we have another one we're making called felonies and then after that we're going to be doing the two or three movies from my book because there's so much material i was i used to bet on football so i had the mafia always trying to kill me and because i didn't pay and uh, and then i had uh, you know trips trips to mexico where the cartel was going to cut my head off on a family vacation that was not a good day um, i would say wait know. How did you get mixed up with the cartel then? What what happened? You wouldn't pay them? No, I was buying drugs down there, and I got uh, involved with the, if there's such a thing as a bad cartel. And they, um, to make a long story short, they go to cut my head off, and I grabbed his sword. I said, I'm not buying this sword, and I'm flipping out. And I said, and the guy goes, see, he comes up. He says, Senor, he doesn't want to sell you a sword. He wants to cut off your head. And I'm going, <laughs> and uh, I'm going, well, this, my wife's really going to be upset about this. You know, <laughs> you know I just, you just. I've learned that, you know, when you're inside, I've been in such, such bad settings and, uh, with instinct, I've, I've learned to say stuff that just totally surprises the people you would not normally say. And plus, uh, I didn't have any fear. I've always felt pretty, very protected. And I think that very much surprised him. And so but that's just one of the stories in the, in the book. So that, uh, what, pretty- what happens when a cartel member wants to cut your head off and you, you know, you deliver a, a, a funny line at him and it, disarms the moment yeah, but he lets then you walk happens. away how, how do you get away well, then then he then i actually had to talk my way out they thought i was some kind of a police person or something oh uh, the mustache and i yeah. had to do a lot of fast talking and uh they thought i you know i had to basically show that hey i'm just a tourist on vacation and i'm you know he's me I, i'm looking for some drugs here not uh, i could care less what you guys have going on between you two and uh I, I very, basically got aggressive the other way, and that and that just blew him away, and it just surprises them. You know, they don't expect that. I had a, I had a, I had another case in uh, in Milwaukee, in uh, Kansas City. I was down. I used to be a professional card counter, and and I was down <laughs> in one of the casinos. I was down in one of the casinos, and I left there, and I had, I only had six dollars left, and I got lost, and I was ended up in the a really bad part of Kansas city and my topper fell fell off my truck and I was in a really bad mood and the C clamps had broken. Here come two guys out of the woods with guns and they pulled them on me. And I, 
and I absolutely lost it on him. I said, put them guns away. You're going to help me put this topper on. I have $6. You can each have $3, and I got some cocaine if you want that, but you're going to help me put this topper on. And they put the guns away. They helped me put my topper on, and they walked away. And I was on the inside of the top or the truck, and I said, and I'm going, you get back here right now. And I said, you know, I'm good for my word. I got $6, and you can do some of this cocaine. They shook their head and walked away. And then I got... I got pulled over by the police about a quarter mile down the road, and the officer said, what are you doing? Now, I've been up for three days, and he says, the cocaine's actually sitting in the front seat, and he says, what are you doing? And, I, and he goes, I said, I'm trying to find 35 north to, to Minnesota. He goes, well, you're about six miles off base. He says, you know where you're at? You're in one of the worst places in Kansas City. I said, really? I said, two nice guys just helped me put my topper on back there. And he goes, he goes what? And I go, you know, of course, I didn't say they had guns and they weren't real nice guys but they, he was he gave me a he gave me a police escort to to a truck stop help me put the topper on and sent me on my way and I go that's got to be one of the weirdest 20 minutes of my life this is the craziest life I've ever heard of, Mike. I got to be honest with you. It's fascinating. I don't know how you're going to make this because I thought I thought you and Stephen were talking about making these like Christian movies, which are historically very very cheesy and and typically bad. So I don't know how you're going to do that and, and include a lot of this stuff. Well, we're getting, this the movies we're making have Christian messages and they and they um, that, that 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 Christian comedy we made. I can't stand. That's one of the things I told Stephen. I said, I don't want to have a budget like with. Christian movies, they are made cheesy, yeah. they're horrible, and uh, and then you have non-Christians even making movies because they sell them to, to, you know, as Christian movies, and they just make them cheesy, and they run them through, like, you know, every once in a while you get one that makes it in the secular market that it's good, but I just wanted to be, have a good, great quality movies, and I've, I've, and I told Stephen, if we make these movies where they're the best quality and, uh, this the first one youth group i actually watched it and now i can put all my passion behind that because it it's a really good movie and it's even uh and then if you add the, the fact that it's a christian movie that even brings it to another level because they're usually so bad and mm -hmm. um the movies that are made for my book i mean obviously you're going to have to have uh you know, it's going to be a big crossover into the secular market, but the message there, the message of hope and the messages that are within that book um, for transformation and hope and everything else are going to be amazing. Yeah, I think you're dealing with the right guy and Steven. I mean, Biodome and all, so that's good. By the way, real, qu <laughs> real quick, who's going to play Mike Lindell? I mean, if you had your first choice. Well, Stephen thinks he is. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah. and I, go, I go, I don't know if that's going to work, but he's, we've hung around so much together that he thinks he knows all my little my little idiosyncrasies and quirks and yes. all my all my micisms but uh is he going to be um, able to I, is he going to be able to grow a suitable stash though i don't know let's see yeah i worry <laughs> about that or question. do the voice I think, he's got to be able to do, do the, do voice. the voice. voice yes yeah i think i think field. um i've had so many suggestions uh and the list goes on and on but uh, I, you know we'll have to see when the time comes but they uh I'm just trying. I'm actually trying to get through my book. My ghostwriter is helping me. You know that I've wrote I've, thousands of hours of transcript and stories, and it's like what to leave in, what to leave out. And he keeps telling me, he goes, Mike, you just have to end because it just keeps getting bigger. The book because you <laughs> yeah. can't you can't even make this up. It's like living inside of a movie where yeah. all of a sudden this. You know, every day something happens to me that doesn't happen to the, you know, the person, the normal, the normal people that would be, you know, like. Yeah, all of a sudden, you're, you know, all of a sudden you're in a bullfight. And he's like, whoa, where'd that come from? Yeah. I get it. Yeah, exactly. It's out of the blue. You know, here you're here. I'm running around at the inauguration and uh, and meeting the president of the United States. And, that, and that's uh I mean, that just doesn't happen to ex-crack addicts, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's been an incredible life, uh, Mike, and certainly we'll, we'll be interested in reading the book. Hey, before we let you go, and we do appreciate your time, I want to shamelessly ask you, we're doing a fundraiser coming up for a local uh, shelter here. In South Oakland right. Shelter. South yeah. Oakland Shelter, and we're going to be doing a week-long fundraiser. How's about donating a few my pillows to the situation? Oh, we'll do. We'll do you better than that. We'll uh, we'll get you covered with uh, a lot of my pillows and uh, and some money to, to oh, go towards it. Wow, awesome! That, that would be amazing. Yeah, we're this is our first dipping our toes into the uh, the water of charity work, and so we really want right. to kind of do something special. That that's really cool, man. We'd we'd love to you know team up with you a little bit on something like that. I know yeah, I know the shelter would appreciate it. You, 
You tell me what you need, and then we'll triple it, and we'll call it a day. Wow. One million dollars <laughs> and one million pillows. <laughs> one million two hundred and eighty-six dollars, and that's all I need. <laughs> well, it's 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 awesome. As Jay said, thank you so much for the time. By the way, really quick, are, did you pull your ads from CNN? I haven't seen them lately. The the um, here's a, you know that had nothing to do with what we you know we had the Better Business Bureau in Minnesota. I don't know if you read that. Yeah. They, uh, they took me from an A plus to an F rating, and then went public with it. And I don't know what there was their agenda was because they say I ran according to their to their um, guidelines that I had ran one of my successful ads too long. Yeah, it's the BOGO and situation. Said, yeah, the BOGO. Yeah, and I said, and I said, you know what? I said we my new ads are coming out. Actually, they they came out today this morning, and and the Better Business Bureau didn't want to wait. I met with them November fifteenth, and I said, you don't run my company. My customers come first, and my employees come first and and they were going to give me a c and i said so you're making me change all my i was their darling company 25 million pillows so 232 complaints that um were answered over five years that and uh and then here you have companies that do tens of thousands of unanswered complaints and they have a, a a plus rating and and then you have companies that have built people out of millions like some bank did and they have a d rating i'm going you know where do you, where do you guys come out that you think you're going to come out giving me a c for for just because you want me to change one of my or take down one of my ads and then they go and then it was funny because they go i go every every because my pillow is so successful I said every product in this country is usually on sale. You have manufactured suggested pr- retail price, and you know what they said? They go, "Well, you're your own manufacturer, so you're, we don't we don't think you should be able to do that." I said, "So if I made my stuff in China and then sold it yeah, that, at a manufacturer suggested retail, that'd be okay with you?" And they said, "Yes." Uh, and I got wow. I got mad. I got mad, and I go, "You're gonna you give me a C rating?" I said, "You just won't give me an F. It'll be the biggest mistake you ever made." I said, "You're gonna ruin one of the best countries." Com- companies this country's ever seen and what do they do they go from an a plus to an f and then they made it public uh, so yeah you know frivolous lawsuits in this country is one of the things that i i am really against um, yeah. that other lawsuits they have against my pillow was because my testimonials were so good for my customers and they sent out i had to i had to settle with them because i didn't want to tie up money for 10 years and they yeah. you know over some frivolous lawsuit and that's the way business is done in this country now it makes me want to vomit yeah they got really hung up on the fibromyalgia thing the california one yeah, you're talking you're yeah. talking about the uh yeah, the class well, action they're talking see these Thank were you. testimonials these were nothing i put in ads yeah. these were testimonials that people wrote in and said hey it helps this it helps this it helps this then they did this class action lawsuit and these cu- same customers go why would you lawyers get this money for our testimonials this pill yeah. really does this and then now i'm doing that i just spent uh over a million dollars of my own money to uh, to do the biggest sleep study this world's ever seen, and when, but when that's done, we're going to be able to come out and tell you how where sleep comes from, how my pillow ties into that, and really change this world. Wow. And then all, the, then all these frivolous lawsuits, everyone's going to go, and they'll go. Maybe I'll go after frivolous lawsuits then and say, Good. you know what's, you know, I mean, it's so bad in this country where lawyers just lawyers. just jump on or to attack good companies, and then yeah. so they can come out uh, ambulance chasers. I've never met a lawyer that I even liked a little bit. Yeah, me either. You know what I mean? Like they're I, awful, they're, awful they're, people. They're, well, I have I have one. He's in house. He's a he's a friend of mine. The, uh, back yeah. in the day when I grew from five to five hundred employees, I uh, my friend says you need to get a corporate lawyer, and I go, what? That sounds horrible. Well, then <laughs> I met him at a I met him in a craps table in Laughlin, Nevada, and a friend <laughs> of, of course friend of mine place and they and the guy goes uh we had our first board meeting and i got i got upset at this board meeting and i i sl- i shut this guy that was skyped in i shut the computer and my friend goes mike you can't do that we got to be a real company now and i said and you can be quiet i got one of those corporate lawyer guys and he goes where'd you find him i said at a craps table in law firm. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out he was from a big law firm here in minnesota and he ended up being one of our great friends and one of the reasons my pillow's still going strong so it's what a blessing that was well it's kind of an inside joke jay here is a lawyer he yeah, was a, yeah. he was a, 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 you know, he's he's doing this now with me. But I'm not an ambulance, ambulance chaser. Like, I'm, so, a, I'm one of the good ones. Yeah. Um, well, so you got a good you got a good one then. That's right. That's right. Hey, by the way, uh, um, as far as the Better Business Bureau, everything I I seem to read, there are more people pointing out what a fraud the Better Business Bureau is than I see attacking my pillow. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. It didn't work out for them. Whatever their agenda was, and it's a, uh, and I'm so. 
blessed having the public behind me. And, uh, you know, there's still some confusion though out there. You know, some people will see that F rating and go, well, they had to do something wrong. Sure. You know, what had to be so horrific that they gave them an F when just in July we were up for their torch award, their, their highest prestigious award. And all of a sudden what changed in a month? Let's see. Supported uh, Trump. I, met Donald, yeah. I, I yeah. met Donald Trump on August 15th in a private meeting. Um, and then I went public with my passion for this man and what, how great he's going to help the country and the inner cities and everything. And then, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, where do you want people to go? Is it MyPillow.com? Is that the best place to go and order a pillow? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, got a promo code. They can save 30% today on uh, on our on a pillow. Yeah, what's um, the promo code? Uh, what, what, what would you like it to be? We'll set it up in the next minute. How about the Detroit cast? Cast. Uh, well, there, is there a shorter promo code than that? T D C, like the Detroit Cast. Okay. Well, hopefully, she's got it. And if okay. you use that promo code, they can save thirty percent. Go to mypillow.com, and we'll get it set up right now, and they'll uh, be the best savings ever for them. Well, thank you, Mike, so much for the time. This is this has really been fun for us. We've been we've been following you for a while here. We've been talking about my pillow on our show for a while now, and and we're thrilled that you're uh, willing to do something. We're going to hold you to that Such a to like help you. out with the, the shelter that we're Oh, gonna... absolutely, absolutely. And do you have a number here, or you can email me, and we'll give you get you some pillows, and some. we'll help out with some money, and uh, um, there's nothing better than I love is helping people. So, Hey, well, Mike, you're such a likable, inspiring guy. We wish you great success in the future, and have a great time in Panama. Uh, make sure you check out the canal. I hear it's striking. Yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. And I'll be uh, I'll be at the National Prayer Breakfast in two weeks with uh, Dr. Ben Carson. If you want me back on your show after that, let me know. Uh, we, yeah, we'd yes. lo- we'd love to do that, and we'll be in touch about the uh, about the charity. Thank you so much, Mike, for the time. We really really appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you. Okay, right, take bye. care, bud. Bye bye.